Okay, we have a question here, which is what do you think about pecan milk and macadamia nut milk? First of all, either of these can be fine. The most important thing is that you're buying a version that does not have sweetener in it. And these nut milks are so sneaky because I have gone to so many coffee shops and said, oh, do you have any unsweetened nut milk? And they say, oh yeah, all our nut milks are unsweetened. And then the few times I've asked to see the box, there's like seven, eight, nine grams of added sugar. So um, you really have to be vigilant and make sure you're buying the box that is actually unsweetened. Between pecan and macadamia nut, I think pecan is actually probably a better choice. It's a lower sugar nut than macadamia nuts naturally, um, because all nuts actually do have a little bit of sugar naturally in them, and pecan has lower than macadamia. Um, and then you wanna, you know, of course, try and find one that's organic if you can without a lot of the gums and fillers. Personally, I love to make my own nut milks. It's so easy. I'll tell you in two seconds. You take one cup of whatever nut you want to use and you take three to four cups of water, put those together in the Vitamix or another high power blender, pinch of salt, a little bit of vanilla, blend until it's all homogeneous, about one to two minutes, strain it through a nut milk bag, which are like $5 on Amazon, and you've got a ton of two ingredient, delicious, thick, creamy nut milk. So try it out, it's really, really good. Ooh, this is a good one. One of the questions here is, what are the best foods to eat to gain weight while keeping blood sugar stable? Ooh, that's a really interesting question. Not one we get as frequently since more people are uh, thinking about how to lose weight, but it's, it's a good question. And I think um, what you're getting at here is that we wanna keep blood sugar stable for optimal health and we wanna keep our insulin spikes down for optimal health over the long term. but some people do wanna put on weight. And so, um, you know, the best strategy here is probably gonna be trying to put on muscle um, more so than trying to gain fat. So that's gonna be more a question of how do we best hypertrophy uh, our muscles to gain weight. And so this is gonna come down to um, really making sure you're getting the right workout strategy in um, for, for muscle gain um, and supporting that with all the nutrients that you need to build muscle. So of course this is gonna be healthy proteins. Um, so you wanna think about clean whole food proteins. So things coming from wild caught fish, uh, pasture raised chicken, um, free range beef, uh, eggs that are pastured. Um, you wanna think about plant-based proteins like organic beans, legumes, nuts, seeds. Uh, these are all gonna be great sources of protein. And then all the other nutrients that are really important for maintaining cellular function. So all the micronutrients um, that you're gonna get from whole foods. So abundance of fruits, vegetables, and thoughtfully sourced animal products. So that's really, I think the focus is if you're gonna be trying to put on weight, try and put it on with muscle, not fat, and support the body with you know really healthy um, whole food proteins and micronutrients. And then of course, um, when you're choosing fats as well to get more caloric density in the diet, um, also make sure you're choosing the low glycemic you know, whole food forms of fat. You don't want the processed foods that have fat in them. You want things like um, coconut, avocado, olives, nuts, seeds, nut butters, again, thoughtfully sourced beef or fish. Um, and so those would be kind of some of the best options, I think. All right, so we got a question of someone who is having protein pancakes for breakfast and they're getting a big spike. Um, even though they've actually eliminated putting maple syrup on it, there's still a big spike. And I think the question is like, oh my gosh, I'm having these protein filled pancakes. Why am I still having a spike? Um, they actually sent the ingredients along with it. And so I'll read them to you. So the first ingredients are 100% whole grain wheat flour, 100% whole grain oat flour, wheat protein isolate, brown sugar, whey protein concentrate, milk protein concentrate, buttermilk. So for me, this is like a, a this one's a pretty clear cut case. This is the whole wheat flour and the whole grain oat flour and the brown sugar all together. Those are gonna all be contributing to a glucose spike because wheat flour and oat flour, when those you know carbohydrates are processed to create flours, 
when you digest them, they're basically just turning into glucose in the bloodstream. So even though this has um, 14 grams of protein per serving, that's just probably not gonna offset that amount of refined carbohydrates, which again, just basically turn into sugar in the bloodstream. And the product also has brown sugar in it. So even though there's only three grams of sugar in the serving, there's 30 grams of carbohydrates from that wheat flour and that oat flour. So in terms of syrups, definitely a good option to not have syrup on these. There are definitely some alternatives you can do for syrup. Um, one thing that I love to do is just take some low glycemic berries like raspberries, which actually have a lot of fiber. Raspberries have some of the highest fiber of any fruit and then blueberries and just simmer them on the stove for like 10 minutes. You can even start with frozen berries. Don't add anything to them, maybe just a little bit of water and then mash them up and have like a really nice unsweetened fruit compote on top. I'll sometimes add tahini, I'll add nut butters. These things all make the pancakes taste great. There's also a brand of um, allulose syrup called RX Sugar, which um, allulose will not spike glucose and has minimal insulin spike. And so that's more of a traditional syrup that's made of an alternative uh, non-nutritive sweetener. Um, and then in terms of pancake alternatives, there's actually a lot of really cool things out there that you can do instead of these store-bought um, pancakes made with grains. You can make plantain pancakes, which can be high protein. So that's like made with plantains, which is a super high fiber prebiotic fruit. Um, low sugar, uh, mix it with eggs and protein powder and baking soda and a few other ingredients. You can Google keto plantain pancakes online and I'm sure there's a bunch of recipes. There's also some other brands of grain-free pancakes um, like Birch Benders um, and they actually have a keto version of their pancake and you can make it higher protein by adding protein powder or eggs. So there's a few alternatives other than, than these grain-based protein pancakes um, that are really delicious. Okay, we've got a question about one of the foods that we talk a lot about in the Levels world, which is oatmeal. This person asks, what are some healthier carb alternatives to oatmeal? I've been eating very low carbs since January, but want to reintroduce some more carbs in my diet um, a few days a week. So first of all, we're talking about oatmeal. The, there's different types of oatmeal, right? There's rolled oats, which are kind of like a processed version of oatmeal. And then there's less processed versions. So there's like steel cut oats and then there's actually groats, which are like the most chewy and whole food form of oats. So steel cut oats and groats are gonna be a way to get carbohydrates via oatmeal that are, that are likely to less spike your glucose. And then of course you can also modify the oats um, to make them have less of a glycemic impact by adding fat protein and fiber on them. So some of the, the best uh, sort of things you can add to oatmeal to, to help stabilize the glucose spike would be things like nuts, seeds, we especially love flax and chia or really any type of nut you know, nut butters, coconut oil, coconut flakes, hemp seeds. You can also do a savory oatmeal bowl and add like smoked salmon or avocado. Um, you can also scoop in some unsweetened protein powder. So there's lots of different ways to put stuff on the oatmeal that, that blunts the glycemic response. Um, we have a blog post about this actually on the Levels blog about healthy alternatives to oatmeal. We have a really wonderful recipe on there that is a warm chia flax and hemp pudding that's from our um, good friend Kelly Levesque. And so this is more like a seeded nut-based oatmeal but really still has that same like savory breakfast um, quality. So those are some things you can do to oatmeal. Um, and then term, in terms of bringing in other carbohydrates to your diet, I think the, the focus should just be on whole food forms of carbs. You know, don't jump for the, the bread or the pastas or things like that that are gonna be made with ultra refined white flour. Stick with the whole food forms of carbs that are just full of nutrient dense foods. So things like, um, you know, the sweet potato, um, you know, if you're trying to bring in more carbs, um, things like squashes or maybe some organic colorful potatoes like purple potatoes or something like that. You can also, of course, bring in some whole fruits and incorporate those into your diet. So those would be the main, main recs I'd have. <laughs>